surveillance video shows their group get into a heated argument. It's very scary. The chaos started aboard a moving northbound J train in Bedside. Arrests by officers of edged weapons like knives were up by 67 percent. It's really horrible to say it's the new normal. That man seen on video jumping into another car. I don't feel safe on the trains. That's New York City right now. These are the most dangerous cities in America. I'm looking for New York in this list and it doesn't show up in the top 100 most dangerous cities. But some people say statistics and stories like this do not give you the whole picture on safety in New York. According to this article, people in my hometown have a chance of one in 106 people of being a victim of violent crime. And the number one spot on this list in Alabama, it's one in 30. But although that might be true, in New York there are a larger number Number of people, a larger number of potential criminals, and everybody's packed tightly together. And not all crimes get reported or dealt with because of a shortage of law enforcement. And look at the Citizen app. I'm here, and over here in the yellow, we have a knife-related incident, and another one, and a burglary, and a fight. It's all less than a mile away, right by the Empire State Building. That's right, we're in one of the busiest, most iconic parts of New York. And yes, being around more people might mean that technically your chances of being part of something are lower, but there's also way more happening very close to where you might be at any given point in time. More people means your percentage chance of being involved in a crime goes down, but your proximity to crime goes up. And I'm not quite sure which is worse. Last night, police tell us a 76-year-old man was attacked and ended up being hospitalized. The officers were called to the 35th Street entrance of the 34th Street B, D, and F train station. That event took place right here in this very same train station, which is across the street from the Macy's. One stop away from here, someone was just tased. And right now, we're in Manhattan's Herald Square. And for reference, Times Square is right over there where you see the lights. In the first six months of the year, the NYPD says subway crime declined by 4.4%. For the month of June, subway crime was up 18.2% overall. Crime in New York City was down. It looked like things were on the right track, but an 18% spike in June, that's like a 180 from all the progress that the city had been making. Arrests by officers of edged weapons like knives were up by 67%. When the year started, there was a huge push to have a higher police presence in trains. I used to hear messages all the time about how there are police at the station if you need assistance. There were more patrols. You would see police walking around, looking at things, riding the train, being on the platform. But lately, I feel like I've been seeing less of that. There's times that you have to be much more aware of where you're at, where you're riding. It's scary. It's just scary. This is the area that the report was talking about. The mezzanine down there, this concourse at 35th and 6th, is largely forgotten overnight and it becomes a dangerous situation. This tunnel gets empty and it is kind of scary looking. There's a Wells Fargo ATM, which nobody probably uses at night. Now the purpose of this is to connect the New Jersey PATH train, which goes to Hoboken and Newark, to the rest of the New York City subway. You can get over to Madison Square Garden and the purpose of the long tunnel is to bring you over to the New York side, which is this way. Now when you get off the PATH train, there are exits. But this is the last exit you're gonna see for quite some time once you continue down that tunnel. Now when that report came out, it showed images on the news of people congregating down here, people hanging out. You could see the ceiling falling apart down here. Right now, it does look better. I don't see any people and I've seen security personnel walking around 
checking on things. You see all these windows here that are boarded up. There are commercial entry points on the other side of those, but I don't really know who's gonna want their business down here. The Herald Center at Herald Square. That's what we are looking at. Now there are some security cameras down here, but apparently at night during the evening, this tunnel becomes kind of like a no-go zone where you don't necessarily wanna be by yourself, especially if you're wearing headphones, if you're on your phone watching TikToks, or if you're just distracted, not paying attention. If something happens, there's literally no way out. The good news is, is that over on the New York side, just like the PATH side, it's well lit. There's lots of people. You've got a manned station booth with security people. I don't see any police wandering around inside at this point. But as you can tell, the turnstiles aren't that active. It's a little bit after rush hour. There is uh, an attendant right here watching the gate. Okay, I see two other attendants on the other side. That's good. It seems like it's well looked after. But that's just over here. The tunnel is over yonder. And again, totally different. Now look, people feeling unsafe on the subway. I'm not gonna say that that's unusual, but to me it's unusual for it to be happening in one of the busiest parts of town, which is one of the most well-policed, where there's the most people. Safety is also relative. Who you are makes a big difference in how safe you might feel down here. Also, the time of day that you're using the train has a lot to do with how you might feel down here. Now, I'm here with Dalton, and I think he probably feels safer on the train than most of us. I feel pretty safe. I don't know. I, I lived in Los Angeles for a while, and uh, those are probably some of the most dangerous trains that you can uh, be on. So, I don't know. I got mugged for, because a guy thought that I stole his glasses, so. Is that the glasses you're wearing right now? This is, in fact, the glasses. <laughs> Have you been on the train at night, only during the day? I've actually been on the train overnight. Overnight? Yeah, I just uh, wanted to experience New York full on, so I rode around the train all night long and just uh, went to different stops. What so was that like? It was pretty fun. I mean, there were times where it gets a little sketch when it's just you and one other guy in the car, but other than that, look at that. We're in the same area. Six minutes ago, we have a report of somebody with a weapon. From January 1st until right now, there have been over 3,000 knife-related incidents in the city. And that's just what was reported. According to a former police officer, knives are a very common thing for people to be carrying. Now, New York has incredibly strict gun laws, but something like a knife, that's a lot harder to deal with. People need them for work. And if police do happen to apprehend somebody who is carrying a knife, the article says that the worst thing that happens is generally a summons, not an arrest. Also, I no longer see police in the subway with the table searching people's bags. And we don't have metal detectors in the subway. If we did, they would beep constantly and nobody would get anywhere. So I don't know if that's a solution. But in New York, there are laws about what length of knife is legal to carry. New York City also prohibits the possession in public of a knife with a blade that is four or more inches. Now look, I would never carry a knife in the train. I don't need one for work. I have absolutely no reason to carry one. And no matter how unsafe I might hear of things being, that's not something I plan on doing. It's a bad idea. But another bad idea was unbanning certain types of knives that might be more dangerous than whatever Swiss Army might sell you. Apparently in 2019, former Governor Cuomo unbanned a type of knife called a gravity knife. Now I'm no expert, but to me, that looks like the assault weapon version of a knife if there ever was such a thing. But there's other weaponless crime going on all around us here in New York. Here we are, 23rd Street and Broadway, right by the Flatiron Building. Another hot spot here in the city. One woman's frightening account of being attacked on a subway platform. She was punched right in the face. Cops in the Manhattan resident was standing on the NRW train platform at 23rd Street around noon on Tuesday. Noon on a Tuesday. That's very similar to the conditions we see right now in this exact same location. Look at this, you got people eating on the sidewalk. There's little boutiques, you can buy some artwork outside side, shades, hats, clothes, more food, cool handmade pop-up cards. This guy's always here. And this over here in the green on the other side of that bus, that is Madison Square Park. You'd figure this would be a safe area where nothing bad ever happens, but wait till you see the subway. If I can get to it, it's so crowded. This particular station is high traffic at this time of day. Again, there are security cameras. Here's another, here's another. Look at how narrow the platform is. It's just like a little ledge right next to where the train lets you off. It's also 
only one entry and exit point right here. Actually, no, there's a second exit way down there at the other end of the platform. And typically there will be lines of people waiting to get out, just standing there. And on a narrow platform like this, in a frustrating subway system to navigate, your chances of finding yourself at the other end of somebody's bad day definitely go up. And the safest place to wait for a train is not out there, it is instead over here before you even enter. It's plenty of room, but it's sad that you even have to think like that. I mean, if you're just trying to use the train and get somewhere, you're not doing anything wrong, but something wrong could happen. And according to Citizen, these yellow dots down here are where somebody was pepper sprayed. That's near our location. And there's a report of a stolen e-bike. When mine got stolen, I never reported it. I just put an air tag on it, but I don't know what good that's gonna do me because if somebody's able to steal my bike, me confronting them isn't gonna do me any favors, <laughs> even if I'm from Springfield. But New York is iconic. It's historic, it's beautiful. And the big question is, is New York more dangerous or is it safer than stories talking about crime waves might let on? Right now, in this park, I feel pretty safe. What do you think? I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.